Welcome to Broward County Library's Armchair Traveler Program. Today we'll visit the British Virgin Islands. My name is Mike and I've been to these islands. I'll be your tour guide for this trip. Our itinerary. Talk a little bit about COVID and visitors require documentation. It's not what you think. Really a short history and maps of the place. Getting there and settling in. Pirates? Tortola and Norman Island, Jos van Dyck Island, Virgin Gorda Island, and the disaster of 2017. Yes, COVID-19 pandemic hit the British Virgin Islands. Like here in the States, the restrictions are changing often. Are visitors permitted to enter? Is there a quarantine period? What about a curfew? All of these questions need asked before you visit. Important to know. British Virgin Islands is a sovereign nation. You will need more than your passport to get in. You need, besides your valid U.S. passport, return or ongoing tickets. They want to know you're not going to stay there. Evidence of adequate means of support, a little cash, and prearranged accommodations during your stay. The islands were named Santa Ursula y las Once Mil Virgines by Christopher Columbus when he landed here in 1493, after an old legend of St. Ursula and the 11,000 virgins. The legend comes from a medieval story that Ursula was a princess who, at the request of her father, a king in Britain, set sail along with 11,000 virginal handmaidens to join her future husband, the governor of France. Once in Europe, which was being besieged at the time by the Huns, all the virgins were beheaded in a massacre, and the Huns later fatally shot Ursula with a bow and arrow. The island's group name was later shortened to the Virgin Islands. How about a really short history of these islands? Christopher Columbus discovered the islands and claimed them for the Spanish, but they never settled the territory. Just van Dyck, a Dutch privateer, established the first settlements and partnered with the Dutch West India Company for trading here. Then a number of the Dutch settlers were driven out by an influx of British brigands and pirates. The British then captured the islands during a war between England and the Netherlands and governed them until 1960. The islands gained separate colony status in 1960 and became autonomous in 1967. As a member of the United Kingdom, the inhabitants are British citizens. The British Virgin Islands consists of four larger islands, Tortola, Anagada, Virgin Gorda, and Jost van Dyck, and 32 smaller islands and islets, of which more than 20 are uninhabited. Anagada is not shown on this map. It's way off to the northeast. The large island on the lower left is the U.S. island of St. John. Most of the islands are volcanic in origin and have a hilly, rugged terrain. Anagata is geologically distinct from the rest of the group, being a flat island composed of limestone and coral. This is a topographical map showing the geological features of the area. The North Atlantic Ocean lies above the islands, on the right in this slide, and the Caribbean Sea lies below them, on the left. Can you see the, uh, the United States and Florida? way up here. Here are the Bahamas, right over here. And the British Virgin Islands? Here they are. The Deep Gouge, a purple area, is the North American tectonic plate grinding against the Caribbean plate. It continues just south of Cuba. This tectonic activity is what caused the volcanoes and thus the islands to erupt. We could fly to Tortola Island, and it would be jet blue, five hours, a taxi, 45 minutes. Instead, let's fly to St. Thomas in the U.S. Virgin Islands, then take the ferry to the British Virgins. Jet blue, four and a half hours, on to Tortola via ferry service, an hour, and then an eight-minute taxi ride. This gets us on the water sooner. Here they are, the British Virgin Islands. We made it. Aren't they a sight? beaches, mountains, grand vistas. 
Let's check in at our home base during our visit. Long Bay Beach Resort and Villas, West End, Tortola Island. Not too expensive and very pretty. This resort is right on the water. Can you imagine this view while having breakfast at the outdoor restaurant? Waves gently lapping, tropical breeze blowing. Hey, we're not the only guests enjoying this restaurant's facilities. Now that looks like a great spot to nap or drink a painkiller. A painkiller? Rum, cream de coconut, pineapple, and orange juice. Or here you could read a book. Maybe read up on the pirates who once roamed these islands. Wait a minute, were there pirates in the British Virgin Islands? The golden age of piracy in the Caribbean lasted from 1650 to 1730. Were they here too? Yes, they certainly were, but not to the extent that they inhabited the Bahamas. Probably the most famous historical account of piracy here involved Owen Lloyd, who was part of a crew on a Spanish treasure galleon named Nuestra Señora de Guadalupe. In 1750, the ship was forced to seek shelter from a storm on the North Carolina coast. At the instigation of the first mate, the crew mutinied and escaped with the galleon's valuable cargo. Part of the cargo was loaded onto two smaller two-masted ships, one of which was commanded by Owen Lloyd. Lloyd and his associates then proceeded to St. Croix in the U.S. Virgin Islands, where they offloaded part of their plunder. They then proceeded to Norman Island in the British Virgin Islands, where the rest was stashed. On Tortola, news had broken that this treasure existed, and at the prompting of the acting president of the colony, a group of prominent planters made their way to Norman Island and recovered the treasure. They divided the booty, but were unable to enjoy their success for long. On hearing about the treasure, the lieutenant governor of all the British Leeward Islands swiftly dispatched a British warship to recover the treasure from the island's planters. It was determined the treasure would be returned, but the people who had dug it up would receive a one-third share of the reward. Many pirate vessels did use the Virgin Islands as a place to hide and recuperate after their activities at sea. The massive islands and inlets that made up the physical terrain of the Virgin Islands were perfect for avoiding detection and gave the pirates a chance to refit their ships, ready for the next voyage. The name Freebooters Point on Anagata Island leaves little to the imagination, and on an old sea chart of the territory is written this legend, so called by ye freebooters, from the gold and silver supposed to be buried there, after the wreck of a Spanish galleon. Freebooter is an old name for a pirate or a water rat. Norman Island is reputed to be named after Captain Norman, a pirate who was eventually apprehended and hanged by the Spanish Guarda Costas, the historical coast guard for Puerto Rico. Bellamy Kay is named after Black Sam Bellamy, a noted pirate who captured over 50 vessels in just over a year. During much of his short career, he used this islet, then named Blanco Islet, as his base of operations, relying on the protection of the surrounding bay while maintaining his fleet of ships. Bellamy soon learned that from this location, ships could be seen and then ambushed while sailing through a Sir Francis Drake channel. Just over the headland on Beef Island lies Hans Creek, named after a well-known associate of Captain William Kidd, who eventually renounced his former life of piracy with the famous captain and settled on Beef Island. Sir Francis Drake himself participated in some of the earliest English slaving voyages to Africa and earned a reputation for his privateering or piracy against Spanish ships and possessions. There was bad blood between Drake and the Spanish army. He always wanted to attack them and, in fact, he engaged them so much in countless devastating raves that the Spaniards began to call him El Drek, the dragon. When he died off the coast of Panama in 1596, Sir Francis Drake was buried at sea, wearing full armor and encased in a lead-lined coffin. Divers, treasure hunters, and Drake enthusiasts continued to search for his final resting place.
The most famous pirate legend is probably the British Virgin's association with the famous pirate Blackbeard. He was known by a number of names, including Edward Teach, Thatch, Thatch. There are two Thatch Islands in the Virgins, Great Thatch and Little Thatch, and almost directly opposite Road Harbor on Tortola is the island known as Dead Chest, where Blackbeard allegedly marooned a number of his men, giving the island its name. It is said these men tried to swim to the adjacent Peter Island, but drowned. Hence the name Dead Man's Bay on Peter Island. The reality is that there is no documentary evidence to support any of this. And academically speaking, there is no proof to show that Blackbeard ever sailed through the Virgin Islands. It is known that Blackbeard did maroon some of his pirates. This happened in the Bahamas and not the Virgin Islands. Let's hit the pool and relax a minute. It is truly beautiful here, isn't it? After a swim, maybe another painkiller, it's the time to go exploring. The capital of the British Virgin Islands is Road Town here on Tortola. Population is around 15,000. It's not very many people, but the population of all the British Virgins is only around 30,000. Cruise ships come here daily. Just down the road from Roadtown is the Colwood Rum Distillery, one of the many distilleries on the island. This site features the original structure of a sugarcane distillery. Visitors to this rustic site can purchase samples of rum. The original boiler still operates and produces rum, which is then stored in original storage casks. The old guardhouse is also intact, and has been turned into an art gallery and a gift shop. 